Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Joining me today is our favorite Brit and ATP Truth Ambassador, Katie Hopkins, who has come all the way from the UK to Washington, DC on inaugural week. Before we get started, I wanna remind ATP fans out there, if you haven't subscribed to our free text message alert system, please do so. Take your cell phone out, text the word truth, and send it to 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed for free. You'll see all of our shows right in your cell phone. Katie, <laughs> welcome. Hey, you know what, Barry? I decided to do this now. I've decided I'm gonna do exactly what you say because that's what we ask people to do and I'm gonna get my phone. So we're gonna ask people to do the same thing, right? So now I go to my text messages and I go to, and I type in 88, Two zero two, right? Right, and then in the message message yeah. box below, just put the word truth. And then I hit set. T R U. Didn't nearly spell truth wrong then, Barry. And then I hit send. Yes, ma'am. In America, I'm not charged for this. It's all free. It's instantaneous, and Boom. you are now okay. signed up. You, you get to see oh, you. Yeah. On that, there's no need for that, but I just thought we should do it in real time. Okay. Yes, over to you, Barry. I'm here in D.C. being your eyes and ears on the ground. So Trump leaves office this week. But the impeachment in the Senate, the trial is going to start after he's gone. Now, a lot of legal experts have weighed in and said the purpose of impeachment is to remove from office an elected official or appointed official who has committed high crimes and misdemeanors. What the heck? is going on if it's so important that Trump is out of office and yet they still want to impeach him to remove him from office after he's out of office? What's the purpose? Oh, I, can't you just, I wish, I wish, I wish I could just, you know, summon up the founding fathers. And, and I say this as a respectful foreigner and outsider, I know I'm just a Brit. But wouldn't it be a glorious thing if, if we could summon up the founding fathers and have them walk up the steps of the Capitol building and go in there and look those people in the face and say, what the heck do you think you're doing to the constitution that we crafted so carefully that's endured the years? Because it's sickening to see what is happening now. This impeachment process has just become this weird sort of... Um, I don't know, it's sort of a demonstration of loyalty to Biden. It's vulgar. It's as if to say, in order to secure my political future, I will prostrate myself at the altar of Biden and I will self-flagellate and remove any evidence of Trump. And, and that is never surely, Barry, you're the expert, but surely that is not what impeachment was about. Well, no, I mean, the impeachment clauses uh, that there are several of them in the Constitution are very clear. It's to remove somebody. There has never in American history been an impeachment trial of a candidate who left office, is out of office, cannot be removed because they're already gone. Yeah. It's like digging up the dead guy so you can shoot him. And the only thing I can think of is the Democrat party is so afraid of the possibility of the return of Trump in four years that they wanna stamp out his possible future run today. Is there a possibility in your mind that Trump could run again in four years? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, the part of you is like, as at a personal level, you know, do you imagine him having the sort of stamina, will or volition to go through this torment again, like walk yourself through fire. But then of course, Trump is not readily and easily beaten. Uh, and so it's perfectly possible. Now, whether he would, whether the party and Republicans and 75 million Americans would want that or whether they will go with someone else next time. But it is almost, isn't it? Like they're so desperate to take this to the very end. They always say those that wish to silence us, Barry, don't stop until we're swinging from a tree. And, and this is a sort of example of that, isn't it? That there's no point where they want to just stop and heal. They've got to keep going until they get blood. And even when they've got blood, they want flesh to go with it. it, it it's like they just don't stop. Well, I, I, I'm taking some sort of 
delicious pleasure in what your new friend Marjorie Taylor <laughs> Green is talking about. <laughs> I mean, this I'm tickled pink about this, and I wouldn't have been, but for the recent history of the Congress, <laughs> this this new Congresswoman from Georgia promises she's going to impeach, at least try, with articles of, of impeachment introduced on the floor of the new House um, against Joe Biden. What can you tell <laughs> us about your new friend, Marjorie? Uh, a, I love her. Uh, my love for her is, uh, is complete. Uh, B, I have a secret plan that I want to take ATP, our lovely viewers and audience and all your supporters, and I want to take them to live with Marjorie. So I'm talking to Marjorie's communication director. I want to do living with Marjorie Taylor Greene for ATP. And I want us to become part of Marjorie's life because I love her. Uh, she's like this little dynamo thing that every time they annoy her, every time they try and crush her, which is every day, she comes back with something else and she comes out fighting. And in her background is this kind of physical training. She was the CrossFit. I think she was one of the top in the world for CrossFit. In her, in her core, you can feel it. There's a, there's a steel core to that woman. And she's used to pushing herself to fight harder, to be tougher. And she has trained and schooled herself well for this fight. She is one of us. She's one to watch. And soon I hope that we can get to Georgia and spend more time with her. I would love that. And the more I read about her, she has a great story. And like you said, has a steel constitution because yeah. let me tell you something. I am seeing something I never thought I would see in a free American. I put the free in quotes. Social media is uniting 100% behind not only a ban of President Trump, and even after he's out of office, but his supporters and all GOP who support him, which includes Marjorie Taylor Greene. What will this kind of, well, I guess you'd call it tech aristocracy, almost fascism lead to? Is there gonna be a backlash or is capitalism gonna bring us new sites that we're gonna move to that really are free, beach sites? I think so. I, I think in some ways, and maybe I'm saying this selfishly because uh, in the UK, we hit the darkness a little time before you and I was booted off when Trump started tweeting me. But I do believe this, you know, push toward uh, watching the share price fall so drastically for Twitter is just uplifting. I say to anybody who's frustrated, do check the share price of Twitter every morning because it will boost your spirits. Uh, we heard from Parley, the CEO, John, who I speak to regularly. Uh, he looks like he's going to get Parley back up by the end of January. I'm trying to encourage him to have a relaunch party in Vegas, which, of course, I'm inviting myself to. And, uh, and of course, Gab for now is a sort of holding ground and is doing well. So it's a delight, I think. I think it will help us regroup. And I think it will help people focus their attention in places they want to be. Twitter has, after all, been a sewer for a very long time. And I think it's time that sewer was left to run its filth down the road, you know, alone. It's time for us to walk away. Doesn't it disgust you as, as someone who believes in freedom? As, as an example, Twitter, there are thousands of people puking out hate, Nazis and anti-Semites and and Arabists that want the Quran as the worldwide governance document, um, that their Twitter feeds are fine. The Grand Ayatollah who preaches death every day is on Twitter every day, every day. But not the American president, not, well, a growing number of US Congress women and men in both the House and the Senate, and not Katie Hopkins. I mean, come on, <laughs> that's despicable to me. Yeah, it, it is. And I think, um, you know, I think it, it demonstrates the sort of place that, you know, and, and I think more and more of us are asking, do, do we even want to be part of that? You know, do we even want to be near that? It's not good for any of us. And with lockdown and, 
you know, people not being able to live their lives normally. I don't think it's healthy for any of us. And I do think actually, you know, we were an age group that were using Twitter. When I look at younger people, they're nowhere near it. They, they couldn't give a stuff about Twitter. You know, my 17 year old, they don't go anywhere near that. It's seen as some hokey old site for strange old people. So you have to remember its lifespan is limited. It's not going to be around forever. Its share price is falling off a cliff. And I hope they are punished hard by people leaving them and them losing their, their share price, I'm hoping will collapse completely. It very well could happen and it might happen quicker than, well, even you are projecting. Mm. Thanks, Katie, for coming on today. And thank you out there in ATP land. Uh, don't forget, subscribe if you haven't. Follow Katie's instructions. It's very simple on your cell phone. And if you don't want to do it on the cell, go to our website, americantruthproject.org. Sign up there. You're going to get a couple copies or a couple chapters, sorry, of our new book because you asked for free just as a thank you for signing up. For Katie and for me, Barry Newsbaum, thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. Thank <laughs> you.